I love your bangs. Get them! Well, so we can thrive as a channel. The funny thing is, we can be part of the bank. I cut them myself. <laughs> okay, so that's I'm going in. Yet. I'm going to let people know. <laughs> You're hiding your true identity. <laughs> Since we're officially filming, it's because of Donica that I cut them. She looks so <laughs> iconic with them that I was like, They okay. finally have grown to the proper length. Like, before, I really was, like, <laughs> but <laughs> now they're, like, where I really like them. But whatever. <laughs> okay, y'all, and welcome back to Donica and Shelby Read. I'm Donica. I'm Shelby. So in today's video, we are going to do our highly anticipated... <laughs> I always <Bye>. us. <laughs> We are going to do the mid-year book freakout tag, which I think is very appropriate. Has it been more appropriate in any year? Because it's about the middle of the year. We are freaking out. Yeah. Definite freak out in every sense of the word. <laughs> right now. Emotionally, mentally, but especially booktubely, because we have been reading some good books this year. I just want to shout out, her name is A Reader in Time on YouTube. This is where I found this book tag first. She did it, and then I started seeing more people I'm subscribed to. But A Reader in Time, I love her. She's very young. I think she's 19. Very sweet. And her taste in books is super eclectic, like me. Like, she reads fantasy. She's, I just love her. So I'm going to link her down below. Check her out. Okay, so number one is best book you've read so far this year in 2020. That's a big question, but I think I knew the answer from the moment I read this book. It's a book I read right at the beginning of the year, and it was Eleanor Oliphant. I still don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> it's completely fine. I have this cover of it, which I'm very proud of. There's like two covers floating around. One from like Reese's Book Club, I think, and then there's this one. So I'm really proud to have this one. <laughs> but I was like going through the book, just trying to like see if this book hits on any of the other questions for this tag. And I was like crying all over again because this book was so good. Oh yeah, and let me just jump in really quick. We're not gonna really give you the synopsis yeah. of each book because we have monthly wrap ups, recent reads. So we're just gonna hit the questions and go, baby. Yeah, so my answer is Eleanor O is completely fine. Love this book. I laughed, so I cried, I <laughs> died. <laughs> I mean, and that le segues perfectly into me laughing, crying, and dying. <laughs> my favorite book, and I just read this, by far the best book I've read since her A Court of Thorns and Roses is Sarah J. Mass, House of Earth and uh, Blood, her Crescent City book, her newest release. This was her step into adult, adult urban fantasy. What is there to say, y'all? This book is, I tried when I answered these questions not to have the same book, like hit mini question. I wanted a different book. But truly, I don't think I've read enough this year where I can do that, you know? And this just hits. I always say she's my queen, and this is why. <laughs> how you are about that book, that's how I was about The Hunger Games. Every single <laughs> question, I was like, oh, from The Hunger Games. Oh, Hunger Games. Oh, yeah, The Hunger Games. So I really had to, like, that. Right. <laughs> Anyways, the next question. Best sequel you've read so far? I was not a reader before this year, really. Yeah. Um, so I didn't read a first book. The only sequel I've read so far is the second book of The Hunger Games when he read the trilogy. That hits it. I, it wasn't even really a sequel for me because I didn't have to wait for it. I feel like The Hunger Games it trilogy for sequel. me was like one big gigantic book I just read <laughs> in a period of time. If I had read it as a sequel, like I feel like if I waited for it, I feel like I would not have been disappointed. Mm -hmm. It was The Hunger Games trilogy was everything to me this year, so... That's my answer for this question. And my same problem as Shelby, I didn't read, I have an issue where I read the, the first book and then I just don't continue the series or whatever, but I don't, and especially this year, I just didn't read a lot of sequels. So the only true sequel you can say is by, it's called The Possession by Michael Recker. And it's his second book following Nolan Moore and his team. They have a show on YouTube in this in this book called The Anomaly, <laughs> I never can say that, <laughs> The Anomaly Files. When I first picked up the first book last year, it was dubbed as kind of like The X-Files on YouTube. And that's what drew me to the first book, which is called The Anomaly Files. So the second book, The Possession, they're both basically standalone. You can read one or the other, but it is, I would say, a sequel because it's the second storyline in this world. I love that the books mix in a little bit of truth with a little bit of twist, like a uh, sci-fi or paranormal twist to it. Michael Rucker, I love him. I will continue reading, hopefully. He only has two books out following this group. So I hope he carries on because I love him. 
highly suggest. The third question is new release you haven't read yet but want to. I think this month in particular as I'm like slowly like realizing the kind of books that I like there are so many books that have already been released in past years and this year that I really want to read so this was really difficult for me because there's quite a few that I want to read but I think the most recent one that I really want to read after I'm done with like the cluster of books that I'm reading is Home Before Dark. <gasps> That's <laughs> mine! I'm I saw it. her pick it up. Let's hold it together because this is both of ours. Here's our thumbnail. <laughs> I'm super, super, super excited. Don, you can talk about it next, but it was That's wasn't it. You're on your. Girl. Wasn't it on your no. anticipated reads? No, or no. I really hadn't heard of him. This is my first time getting my first time reading Riley Riley Sager. So I feel like you're getting out of the. Frame oh, here. sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I know. I'm always like, what? I the more shook it, I get. <laughs> Question four: Most anticipated release for the second half of the year. So like I was just touching on in the first question, there are so many that have already released that I'm kind of overwhelmed with all the past books from the beginning of time <laughs> that I'm not really catching up on what's Does about. that ever make you sad? Like you just think about your life and how you won't ever read as much as you ever could want. Yeah. I think maybe in heaven, that's all I'll do. And that's what I read at my Starbucks themed house. <laughs> God already has it. They're waiting for me. I know. Starbucks themed house? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, since I don't really have an anticipated release, I just wanted to give another shout out to and I say another Suzanne because, Collins. I just want to <laughs> give like, another shout out. Any book she'll ever release, yeah. if she ever does, I want to shout her out. Oh my goodness. Oh, the Hunger Games. Yeah, that's my anticipated release. I'm going to give myself amnesia to read it again in a few months. I wanted to give a shout out to Book of the Month, which isn't like sponsoring us or or anything it's just never. a service <laughs> they, yeah they wouldn't ever i don't think they could never <laughs> our service that i found this past month that was like a great resource for me to get books like affordably new releases so i want to give a shout out to book of the month because her link will be down below girl don't be afraid to uh, say it i yeah. used her link she i saved money i bought two hot new releases for like 20 bucks because the shipping is always free yeah so i mean i'm beatable i think i'm going to depend on book of the month to kind of let me know what the good release is coming for up sure. on. <laughs> so. for sure but i will say my anticipated re release is called i don't want to mess this up but a sky beyond the storm and this is the fourth and final book in the an ember in the ashes by saba tahir i've read the first two i just also read the graphic novel novel that came out called a thief in the Thief in the Trees, only two books in, and I didn't want to carry on because I knew I would forget, but I've already forgot the first two. So I'm really going to have to either spark notes the first two or reread them. But wow, y'all, those books, I mean, they're for being YA, she's not afraid to go there with your feelings. No one's safe in those novels. I mean, really, really great novels. That book comes out, I think, in the late fall. So I'm looking forward to picking up that one next is question number five biggest disappointment so far aka cancel yourself immediately <laughs> <laughs> well luckily mine is but the beginning of the year i read a lot of really random books that i got at like half price or like i already had in my library so mine is diary by chuck palahniuk who i didn't know what to expect and i think I was expecting something super gruesome and just kind of creepy. and i think i gassed you up on that because the book the book i think i've only read one by him but it was gory it was well, disturbing and i was like shelby prepare yourself because he'll go there well yeah because Sonic had said that so i even went online and like i went on like book reddit or something and i looked i just went all over the internet everybody was saying his stuff will f freak you out and mm -hmm. creep you out and it's gonna be hard to read mm -hmm. well then i read this and it was just the ending was disappointing and then i went back and i was like reading the comments and they were like and diary is his most tame book <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> oh okay yes <laughs> my biggest disappointment this year was the woman in the window now i'm disappointed not only in the book but in the author himself unfortunately i was really expecting i don't know what i was expecting but you're following anna fox and she has agoraphobia so i just thought the premise of someone who's like essentially trapped in their house now being not only trapped but trying to help someone but you can't it just seemed like it was gonna be so gripping so thrilling it fell very flat to me it was very boring number six is biggest surprise of 2020 and mine has to be the one and only Hunger Games because, <laughs> because I guess everybody was always like wearing like Hunger Games shirts and like I- By everyone, I, do you mean me? <laughs> 
I don't know. Like, I just thought it was going to be like a Twilight thing, which I actually love Twilight. <laughs> I was a Twy hard. In you're, the you're, are, are, you, are you one of those people when someone's like really like what, a lot what, of hyper? Yes. Like? You're just immediately like, I'm going to. Kind of. I'm not like that with books in general. I love overhyped books. But I guess in the world, because like, there was culture, also movies, there, yeah. and it was a lot. I'm sure. And then there was like up. there was like people were doing like Katniss for Halloween. I guess I just thought it was because it like was over so oversaturated. Yeah, because it was like so oversaturated. I thought it was gonna be really shallow. But it was like one of my favorite experiences oh my of my God. life. Period. <laughs> I loved it. So that's my biggest surprise. So my biggest surprise is the Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. Y'all, when I read this, I was texting Shelby. I thought this would be her favorite book of all time i mean it, it, this, this was this was my favorite book unfortunately this one was like ah. <laughs> i was texting shelby i was calling shelby i was squealing i just could not tell her how much i loved this book i love forbidden love i love when two people don't really want to love each other or whatever and then they just end up you know the tension the build up but in this book the stakes of them not falling for each other are so high and they go into it saying we can't there's no way we can and it's just so good also the main character is so sexually empowered she's like this is my body and i'm gonna do what i want with it and it's not it's just it was so so fresh to see that that she really just did what she wanted and it was just i love it can't say enough and i was very surprised number seven is favorite new author either their debut book or they are new to you. First of all, every author I read this year was new to me, but I would have to say the two writing styles that like really stuck out to me the most this year. One, um, I have, I talk about it a little in a video that I like have been filming this week, but a book I really like that I read this month is called The Vanishing Half. And after mm. I read it, I don't know where it went. <laughs> it actually vanished. So I don't have it to show y'all, but Britt Bennett's writing in that book, her writing in that book was some of the most gorgeous storytelling I've ever read mm. so it was it was beautiful the way she worded things and another book I'm actually I know that I can't really mention it because I haven't finished it yet but I'm reading all the light we cannot see right now and Anthony Doerr his writing I think is like the best that I've read this year Anthony Doerr and Britt Bennett I think those are my favorite new to me authors okay my favorite Authors are both new to me. Neither of these are their debut, but they're new to me. The first one is Alex North. The first book, The Shadows, like the, when you read a book and you like it so much, you go and you put all the author's books on your TBR. I think that says something. One, he doesn't have too many. This is like only his second book and he's part of a short anthology. But I'm like, I'm gonna pick these up. I'm gonna read these. Cause I just like them that much. And so I think that says a lot about him, as about his writing. And then just another little throw in, at the beginning of the year, he, I would go to him. He is horror, he's thriller. His name is Michael Brent Collins and he is on Kindle Unlimited or maybe even Prime. Anytime I was in between books or maybe even entering a book slump, I would go to him. He's my go-to. I just think his, I mean, if you read, watch my recent reads or monthly wrap ups for the beginning of the year, I'm always, he was in every one cause I just love him so much. And I stopped cause I kind of burnt myself out. But he's also someone that I just go to. I love his writing. Really simple. Just like this one. Simple, quick. I like that. Question number eight. Newest fictional crush. And anyone who has been watching our channel for the through the Hunger Games trilogy, <laughs> Hunger Games May, knows that mine is PETA. What to say. Wow, what a moment. Um, <laughs> a moment most pleasing to me in my career is getting to read PETA. So... I have nothing more to say. And just PETA. I am Team PETA. I'm a malarker. I don't even know if that's what we're called. I've said this during like Hunger Games May, but he has every single characteristic that I love in a person in general, whether it's like <laughs> as a friendship or not. Like it's just what I like as a person. It's kind of what I want to be as a person. He has all those like admirable qualities. But I'm <laughs> I want to become PETA. <laughs> it's going too far. <laughs> okay, just really quick. I will say, um, I don't know why I just didn't even think about the Hunger Games when I was doing this. I couldn't but stop thinking about I it. I will say PETA is a better choice for me. I just couldn't, I just didn't think about it. There wasn't a lot of male or female characters that I could say I had a crush on. I don't know why. I really was thinking and looking. The, the one I would say is Hawk from Crescent City. He's an angel and I just, I'm partial to those characters. So I will say Hawk from Crescent City, but. He's nice or he's literally an angel? No, he's an angel. <laughs> he's a fallen angel. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you, you know, 
Sarah. 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 Okay, next is number nine. This was kind of difficult for me. Newest favorite character. So this was really, really <laughs> difficult for me because I wanted to just say Peta or Katniss or Finnick from The Hunger uh. Games, like any of those. Mm -hmm. But when I really thought about it, I was like thinking back to Eleanor Oliphant and like why I loved it so much. And I think it was for the characters. Um, I really like Raymond as a character in that book. Um, he reminds me a lot of kind of, I guess, like Peta. Like what I like about both of them is that they're always there for like the main character. Um, and I really like Eleanor. She was a very like flawed character, but that's what made her mm -hmm. so like lovable. I typically like characters who I can empathize with, who even if they're flawed, they're always striving for like what's good. And I also like characters that are really cute. I wanted to put from <laughs> this book Marie Lor Marie Lore. The little girl from this book I really, really like, but I couldn't put it yet because I'm only halfway through and I've only read her childhood. So who knows how she is later, but... My character will be Pippa or Pip from A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I like her because when I was reading, I kept saying I loved how Holly wrote her. Because sometimes when you're reading mysteries and you have the main character and there's a clue or something and you see the clue and you're like, ugh, this main character's not gonna see this clue for who knows how long. And Pip would be like, hmm, I'm onto something. <laughs> she was very smart, very strong, would not stop. She was like, I'm gonna solve this. I don't care who stands in my way. I remember you saying you liked her mm -hmm. as a character. Okay, number 10, another difficult one for me, book that made you cry. Oh gosh. A lot of books made me cry this year. <laughs> there were so many, but the worst one where I was crying, not just because of the book, I was just, I was sobbing. It was <laughs> Me Before You, Me Before mm -hmm. You. Mm -hmm. That was a book where I legitimately, like, I legitimately regretted it. I didn't even <laughs> see it on my bookshelf because I think I threw it away. I couldn't find it for this video. The ending was really, really hard to read and oh gosh, I literally remember putting the book down and like my shoulders were heaving. I was like, Ugh. My book is Crescent City. <laughs> when I say I cried in this book, because sometimes the moments were so sweet because she'll write characters very broken. There'll be moments of like them realizing that they're loved and I, I'll cry. But the last 200 pages of this book, y'all, I am not, I am not being dramatic. I was sobbing and it got to a point where I was like this, <laughs> I was doing that into the air and then I had to laugh because I'm just alone. It's like six in the morning. Everyone's asleep. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I've not cried this hard for a while. Oh, another one that I'd like to throw in was The Vanishing <laughs> Half that I just read. There wasn't like a sobbing moment, but for like the last honestly like 75% of the book I was just constantly teary-eyed because mm -hmm. I guess the implications throughout the entire like last half of the book what the characters are going through the real world like parallels it was just enough to make my heart just a little bit broken for the entire mm -hmm. last half of the book I was always prepared to cry question number 11 a book that made you happy a lot of books made me happy this year but one, this one's very, I feel like someone will think that I'm like an evil person for saying educated by Tara Westover because her life was so oh, but tumultuous. Oh, there's a good payoff. Yeah. Man. I guess what made me so happy is that she got out of it. She went off to college, like she got her education and now she's like a role model. Like that's mm -hmm. who she is. It was a little bit sad. She was kind of saying that some people in her family saw situations a little bit differently. But she knows that she, A, she was young, but B, like no one could really see her unique experience that she had in that family. So it was very sad, but it also did make me happy and it made me really grateful. Like that book in particular made me really grateful because I was like coming out of college and it was a little bit difficult for me mm. at the end. So I was just super grateful for my education. And I will say one thing that really irks me and I really encourage everyone to think about this when you're arguing with someone or when someone's opinion differs, you cannot take someone's experience away from them. You cannot take their feelings. If you both experience the same childhood, the same anything, or just the same situation, you cannot tell someone, it's very unfair to say, why are you angry about this? Or why did that make you sad? Or this is not how it happened. It's like, no, but to me it did. To me yeah. it happened that way. So I always try to, <clears throat> to, if I'm in a fight with someone or argument, I'm always like, or, or something like that, the past, the present, whatever. I'm always like, wait, I can't take away your feelings. I have to acknowledge them and say, okay, I see you. And maybe I saw it different, but <laughs> what is this? Psychology corner? 
What the heck? My happy book was The Midnight Hour by Benjamin Reed and Laura Trinder. This is a middle grade book. Oh my gosh, y'all. This was one of my favorite middle grade books of the year. My favorite, actually, by far. Their writing is so funny. The main character is so sassy, and I love how they wrote a main female young girl who's not bratty. They don't write her as bratty. She's just sassy, and she knows it. She calls her mouth her gob, and if she if she starts being sassy, she'll be like, oh, there goes my gob again, and it's just so sweet, but there are moments in this book that are hilarious. I cackled. There's in particular, <laughs> me and my son, because he's read this, talk about this book often, because he's reread this book like three or four times. It's one of his favorite books, because it's funny. It's really funny. There's a vampire in this book. Every time you see him, he gets beat up in some way like in a devastating way but because he's a vampire he survives <laughs> i want to read it with that you have to i'll leave it here i'll leave it in the, in the, the leave pile but love this book i highly recommend it in october we should only read scary books or I, spooky books. i was planning on it <laughs> okay well next question 12 most beautiful book you bought or received this year i feel like we have the same one yeah <laughs> Gorgeous. Do, 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 do. Look at that beautiful book. Never been done. Never this been done. Is, and the fact that Isabella Banias designed and drew this herself. So this is Woven in Moonlight by uh, Isabella Banias. This is her debut novel. The cover reveal for her second book in this series came out a couple, like a month or so ago, and it's equally as beautiful. I cannot wait to pick it up. I mean, this book is just, is absolutely beautiful. I just realized it's on here. Look. <laughs> Spoiler. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> Last question. 13. Books you need to read by the end of this year. Okay. So, I'm going to try to just do like quick fire. I don't want to You know what? I them. feel like I took this as books are. Wait, like anticipated reads? Uh, yeah, like, I took it like that. But it's okay. It's just that's fine. Oh, okay. Well, I do have a even, lot I need to regardless, read. Regardless, even if it was, I still would have had to say yeah, some different yeah. ones because I don't know any books going to Okay. Okay. First and foremost. Little Fires Everywhere. Ooh, Come wow. on. Anybody who likes books like me, contemporary, I don't know what the heck else you would call that, loves this book. I really need to read it. If you read it, I'll watch the series. And, we'll and you know compare. what's so funny? Little Fires Everywhere was a book that Reese Witherspoon, or is that her? Is that mm -hmm. her? Right? Mm -hmm. It was in her book club and she loved it. And now so isn't much. she in it? Yeah, her in. Um, what a dream. Is it Carrie Washington? I want to see that's her name. Yeah. The next is one that I, re I keep seeing everywhere. It's called Deacon King Kong. And I have recently loved, I realized that I like reading like, I don't know, period books. I don't know what you'd call it, but like books in a different time period. Mm. And I believe Deacon King Kong is set in like a different time period, but not like so far long ago, maybe like the 60s or something. But anyways, there's this like part-time deacon. He has like a problem with alcohol, but the book is supposed to be kind of like funny, quick fire, like mm. satire. <laughs> the drink he likes to drink is called King Kong, which is this... It's like the nickname for this homemade like liquor, I think, that his friend makes or something. He like point blank shoots a mob boss in the face or like oh a drug gosh. dealer boss in the face. So that sounds super interesting. The next, oh my goodness, I cannot wait to, I think, I don't know if I'm going to ebook this or see if it's somewhere online because I finally have my library card. So I need to see if that I can access any of these books somehow mm. online. It's called The Splendid and the Vile. And... All the light we cannot see made me realize it reaffirmed how much I love historical Ooh, uh, fiction. Historical just historical books in general. Mm. The Splendid and the Vile follows Winston Churchill in like the Blitz, which I Is this real? Is this yeah, like yeah. Oh. Essentially I don't know enough about history. That wasn't my strong suit when I was growing up, but I do love history. So I didn't even know what the Blitz was. Do you know what the Blitz is? <sighs> Exposed. It was like a month long period where the Germans mm. bombed Britain, I think, every single day. Every single day, multiple bombs. So the people in that in that oh area were, lived in fear and they had to go into bunkers multiple times a day and they got used to the air raid sirens. Oh my. Like the sirens were a normal part of their life. They always had to go underground. Mm. They lived in fear for a month. And so we're following Winston Churchill and like how he became a leader and how he like encouraged his people during that time. I hope I got all of that correct. Um, if someone in the comments, feel free to roast me. It's okay at this point. <laughs> I handle the comments. <laughs> I don't want to see all that. The last is a book that I've been wanting to read since the beginning of the mm -hmm. year. I just need to I just need to buy it. It's called Hidden Valley Road and it's by Robert Coker, I believe. And honestly, I've been wanting to read that since the beginning. You so have. I just get need it. to get it out of the way and buy get it. Get it. Book it. of the month. 
Get there, get that book on there. I bet they do. So the first one is called To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. And this is by Christopher Polini. He is the writer of Aragon. This is his second book or the second tale, I guess he's telling because he had four Aragon books. Aragon the Dragon books? Mm -hmm. And that, that was published, I believe, around 2005. So this is 20 years later. No, not no, all, we're rounding. But I mean, 15 years later, he's writing his next book. It's in space. Basically, we're following a xen, xenobiologist named Kira Navarez. And she finds an alien relic beneath the surface of the world. And <laughs> you're only, every time I describe a book, you laugh. You know what? I'm not used to fantasy, so these like outlandish. I remember, and I will never forget. I think when I was doing the books I need to read, my most anticipated books for the year, I read the synopsis of this book, and it said, "What does it say? Tell me." Bryce Quinlan had the perfect. Read it. Bryce Quinlan had the perfect life, working hard all day and partying all night until a demon murdered her closest friend. <laughs> How can you not, like, out of context? I know. When you read historical Winston Churchill, I'm sure it does sound a little weird. I'm crying. Okay. Anyway, it just seems super interesting. I like space things. I like, and it just, it's, I love alien stories when they're obviously done right. So I, I have complete faith in him. The next one is called His and Hers by Alice Feeney. It's some sort of murder mystery where a woman and I think her ex-husband are entangled. She's a journalist. I think he's a, a detective. Someone dies and they're both like involved. So whoever was murdered, I think is intertwined with both of them. And I don't know if one of them did it. It's dual perspectives. I know it's going to be like this is my favorite and this is really what fools me the most in in thrillers is when it's unreliable yes it's like an unreliable narrator so one of them may be lying i don't know but then you're just i guess maybe figuring out which one of them killed the person i'm not sure it looks interesting can't wait for that one all of these have not been released yet they're releasing throughout the rest of the year the next one is called a deadly education by naomi novik and it seems like it's um uh, a girl going to like a school of magic and maybe they're fighting to the death at this school i don't know but super interesting i'll link all these down below and the final one i'm looking forward to is called the cousins by karen mcmanus and she wrote one of us is lying which actually i dnf that book i couldn't get into it but this one's about i think a grandmother who passes away and three cousins go to either collect the money and then it gets crazy from there i'm Ooh, sure like knives out kind of yes very knives out ish so those are mine all right guys thank you so much for watching um as always don't forget to like comment and subscribe it helps us out i think we're almost at 80 subscribers and I know at least two of y'all are not our family members. <laughs> yeah, the math is I mean, finally starting to equal that. Some of y'all are related to us. I'm going to be doing a vlog oh. while I read this. Shelby's doing a vlog reading. Yeah, I'm doing a vlog finishing up All the Light We Cannot See. If I can ever finish this book, I don't know why it's taking me so long. But So those videos will be coming out and then our... And then our next book talk is going to be Mexican Gothic. Ooh, we cannot wait to read that. So that will be coming hopefully early August once we get all these other things done. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until our next video guys, we'll talk to you next time.